Hi everyone, Jeremy here. Thanks for watching today. In this video, I'm going to be creating a 3D gift box. No specialty dies are required to make this gift box. You can hold three Terry's chocolate orange, but it's a generous size and it can hold other gifts. So as I said, you don't need any specialty dies to create the gift box. I'm just using the dies here as added embellishments. From Card Making Magic, I'll be using Circle Elegant Nestables, and it's this die here. And then from Simply Made Crafts, the Big Bow die set, and I'll be using the Large Bow here. To make the gift box, you'll need one piece of cardstock that measures 11 and a half by nine and three quarters. Along the 11 and a half side, we're going to score at half, three and a quarter, rotate and score at two and three quarters, six and a half, seven down to the second score line and nine and a quarter. So excuse my pencil marks if you can't see them, it's just a guide to help me um, show you the cutting process a little bit later. So you'll need a second piece of cardstock that measures 11 and a half by seven. Along the 11 and a half side, we're gonna score at half and three and a quarter. Rotate two and three quarters and six and a half. Then you'll need a piece of 10 and one eighth by four and five eighths. Along the four and five eighths side, you're gonna score at half. One, three and five eighths and four and one eighth. Rotate and then you're going to score at half, one, nine and one eighth and nine and five eighths. For your mats you'll need three pieces of eight by three and a half and two pieces that measure three and a half by two and a half. Then for your layers, you'll need three pieces of a seven and three quarters by three and a quarter, and two pieces that measure two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I'm gonna start the cutting process with my largest piece of cardstock. And I have the half inch tab here at the top and the half inch tab here at on the left hand side. So the first thing that I want to do is remove this rectangle piece here. So I'm going to cut up the score line to the first line here and then across there. Then the next score line to the right hand side, I'm going to cut straight up there to the first score line. I'm then going to rotate so I have the half inch tab here to the left and the half inch tab here at the bottom. And I'm going to remove the first rectangle and the second rectangle. So I'm going to start cutting here and I go past the first score line up to the second score line. So I've mo removed that large rectangle. I just want to take this little square off here.
So with my half inch tab facing the top, you should have a shape like so. My apologies with the, the removal of this rectangle. I should be cutting right up to the first, second score line here. But I'm leaving this rectangle in place. So I hope that makes sense. So you've got a tab there. So now I'm going to start removing some wedges. So this is the tab that will connect both of our pieces together so I've taken a wedge off there and these will be the base of the box. So I'm going to remove a tab there. A tab there. And a tab there. So if I place that on my mat, you should end up with a shape like this. I'm not going to fold and burnish any of the score lines just yet. So I'm going to set that piece aside. Next we're working on the 11 and a half by 7 piece. On the left hand side here we have the half inch tab and on the top we have the half inch tab. So the first thing I want to do is cut up. So I'm moving one, two score lines across and I'm cutting up to the very first score line. I'm then going to remove this rectangle piece here. So I'm cutting straight up to the first score line and removing that piece there. Then I'm going to rotate so that I have the half inch tab here at the bottom and the half inch tab to the right hand side. I'm going to remove this rectangle piece completely. So I'm cutting up to the first score line. And then cutting that away. Then you want to remove this little square here. So if I place it back upright again, we'll have a shape that looks like this. And then we're just going to move, remove some wedges from the tabs. So I'm going to remove from this tab here on the left hand side and this piece here at the bottom. This will be the base of our box so I don't want to remove any tabs from there. Any wedges from there I should say. So if I place that down on my desk, you should have your second piece that looks like this. Set that aside. Then we're left with this rectangle piece. So I'm going to rotate so I have the shorter edge at the bottom. Any edge is fine. Starting from left to right, I'm going to remove the two squares here. So cutting up from the first score line pass uh, to the second and removing that tab there. And then I'm also going to remove this square here. So cutting up to the first score line and removing 
the square and then I'm going to follow the same process on this side so I'll start with a smaller square remove that don't quite want to come away there so then you've got a shape like this I'm going to cut up to the second score line here and take a wedge I'm going to do exactly the same on this side I'm going to take a wedge out of this piece here and then the same on that side and then these two outer pieces here I'm going to remove a wedge from that one and from that one so your piece should look something like that I'm going to rotate and do exactly the same Then you should be left with a rectangle piece that looks like this. So I'll just pop it on my mat so you can see it better. Now this piece here is going to form the tray that will sit inside the gift box. I'm going to cut three apertures out of this piece and then the Terry's chocolate orange will sit inside them. So if you're not using this gift box to hold those treats you can completely skip this step I apologize I should have mentioned that earlier so I've made some markers on my rectangle piece to guide me to the center point and also to make sure that this equal spacing for the three apertures now you don't have to do this but I wanted to make sure that my first aperture was completely central and then I've added some score lines either side as I said to make sure that it has equal space in but you can can do this by eye you don't have to be that precise so this is why I haven't burnished any of the score lines because I'm going to be running most of my pieces through the die cutting machine um, before assembling the box so I'm going to use some washi tape to hold that in place and I want to use it in the centre of the circle because that's what we're removing so hopefully then we're not left with any sticky residue on the rest of our cardstock so I've cut my first aperture I'm going to do my second so you should end up with a piece like this and because I've run it through my die cutting machine several times um, I've lost um, the impression from the score lines so I'm just going to reinforce those I'm going to fold and burnish all my score lines on this piece then we've created a tray that will sit inside the gift box I've decided to cut two extra pieces that measure eight and one eighth by two and five eighths and I've stuck them together using Kalal glue and what I'm going to do is add the tray to this piece here and then completely stick it into the bottom of the gift box so that it's reinforced. So I think the first thing I'll do is add some quick grab glue here. So I flip the base over and I'm adding glue to the right hand tab. I'm then going to fold this piece over completely. Add in glue to the left hand tab and fold in that back on itself. So you then have this little rectangle piece. I'm just going to close it up so 
little bit of my tab sticking out there trim that down so I'm going to add glue to the tabs here and glue along the tab there I'll attach those two tabs to this back piece and wrap this piece over the top and square everything off so the same thing on the opposite side a bit of glue on these tabs here and then on this top tab and wrap it over as so so if you're not getting the desired pressure that you want for this tab I flip it over and put your bone folder inside and press it down and then that'll help it grab so we'll we have we end up with a tray like so and that'll sit inside the gift box and hold the three Terry's chocolate orange I'm going to take the smaller of the two large pieces And this rectangle here will form the front of our box. So I have prepared my mat and layer to attach to this piece as I'll be running it through my die cutting machine. So I want to cut three apertures for each of the Terry chocolate orange. So this is the little tip I picked up off my friend Simone at Blondes Cards and Crafts. So she suggested if you're not sure that your cardstock will completely cut through on your die cutting machine, you can do a test cut with some of your scraps. So I've got the three pieces attached together there. And I'm just going to use the same circle aperture and see if that will cut through on my machine. So that didn't cut through. So what I'll do is cut the apertures out of this piece then draw a pencil mark around it on this piece and then run that through separately on my die cutting machine just for my peace of mind i'm just going to make a marker for the center point so i've just attached the circle die with some washi tape the same process as the tray i'm just going to make, make my way along and cut the three apertures out of this card so then i'm left with a piece like this so what I'm going to do is line this piece up in the centre panel, making sure I've got my quarter of an inch border around each side. And I've just drawn around each circle so that I can cut the aperture. Okay, so that's my three apertures cut. So same as before, I'm just going to reinforce those score lines. Okay, so I'm going to fold and burnish all the score lines. I'm then going to attach this piece. And I'm going to use the Kalal glue to really strengthen that piece back up because we've lost a lot of it running it through the die cutter machine and with the apertures. I'm then going to bring in my other piece. And fold and burnish on the score lines on this piece. I'm then going to attach these together. So I'm going to add some quick grab glue along this tab here. So when I'm attaching these together, I'm lining up this score line with this score line. And before I close everything up, I'm going to add my frames around my apertures. So I have the original circle die that I use to cut a piece out of this and then I have this frame. So I've added some washi tape and attached them together so there's equal border. 
and I've die cut that three times in this hot pink mirror card. So I've gone ahead and I've attached my frames to the circle apertures. I've also added my mats and layers. However, I gave you the wrong measurement for the lid. So that should be a piece that measures two and a half by eight. So that will sit on there. And then the pattern piece is two and a quarter by three, uh, sorry, two and a quarter by seven and three quarters. And that will sit on top of there. I'm gonna glue those down again while I have a flat surface. And then the last thing that I want to do is add some vellum behind this piece. So I did say earlier about maybe adding some acetate. So you could also do that. But I decided to add a piece of vellum so that it just disguises the terry chocolate orange slightly. So I've got a piece of eight by three and a half. So I think I'll use my quick grab glue. I'm just going to add a small amount around the outside, not too much because I don't want it to ooze and you'll be able to see it from the front. And then I'm just going to go. Sorry, I'm slightly off camera there. I'm just going to go around the edge of this. Place that down. So now that I've attached the vellum, I'm happy to assemble the box. So I'm going to flip it so that it's got the cardstock facing downwards onto my mat. I'm going to fold this tab over here and, and add some quick grab glue. And then fold this piece over so that it all lines up nicely. I've just folded it back on itself because I'm just conscious of that vellum and I don't want any glue to ooze everywhere. Okay, so we've got this piece here with the half inch bit there, so that's the top of our box. And we have these two pieces then on the side to help stabilize the lid. And we might need to do a little bit of trim in there to make sure that it slots in. But I'm going to work on the bottom. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here on camera. So I have this piece here with the tabs. So I'm going to place that in the bottom. And then have my two side pieces which will go over the top. And then close it up with this nice squared edge. I'm going to turn it back on its right side, so it's standing up. Put some pressure in there. Make sure everything sticks. So hopefully you can see that. Sorry if the lighting's not very good. I'm filming at night, so hopefully you can see it okay. Now I'm gonna add the tray. So again, I'm gonna add some Kalal glue. Strengthen that base. I'm just going to press that down one more time with my bone folder, make sure 
nice and attached and then pop that inside so that perfectly sits inside there and again I'm going to use my bone folder just in between those apertures and press it down so let me just have a look at this lid see how it's sitting so I didn't take any wedges off this bit at the start because I like to do it more towards the end to see how much I need to take off so I've just taken a slither off there and see if it'll fit and I'm just going to take a tiny bit off these edges here let's see how that closes now Now that's nice and snug and it holds itself in place, which is what we want. So this is the front of the box. I think that looks quite nice. So I'm just going to bring in the bow that I prepared off camera. So using the Simply Made Crafts um, big bow die set. So I've cut that in white cardstock and pink cardstock to match the colour scheme. I'm going to place that in the centre. There we go, that's my completed box. I'm just going to add my Terry's Chocolate Orange. I won't leave them in there too long because I want to let it fully dry overnight so it gets nice and strong. I just wanted to show you that they do fit in. And then that's how it looks from the front. So you've got a little peak of colour there behind the vellum. A really nice sturdy gift box i'm really happy with that let me know what you think in the comments below i'm just going to take those back out as i said because i want to give it a chance to dry but it's quite a roomy box so you could fit um quite a number of of gifts inside there and also you have that extra space if you don't use the tray then that I've created to hold those three Terry's chocolate orange. If you have enjoyed the video, I'd be grateful if you could give me a thumbs up, a comment, or consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. If you make this gift box or any other inspiration shared, you're welcome to join the Facebook group Gems Gems, which I'll link in the description box below. In the group, you're welcome to share any makes inspired by my channel, Gemily Crafts. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.